Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, we're going to be looking at the curves menu and look at the attach curves command. We've already talked about detach, which of course would be the opposite of attach. So the attach command for curves will attach multiple curves together. So in order to do this, we would need to have a couple curves in our scene. So let's go to the create menu curve tools. You can use any of these curve tools, but I like to pretty much use the CB curve tool. So CB curve tool, and I'll just draw out a curve, and it's kind of random, no real meaning to its shape. And just for the sake of simplicity, I'll control D to duplicate the curve. Now I have both of these, and then I'll hide the grid so we can see the curves better. So we're going to attach these two curves together. So I have both curves selected. I'll go to the Curves menu, Attach, and let's look in the options. I'm going to Edit, Reset Settings. So these are our de default settings. And also note here that Keep Originals is checked by default, which means that when you do apply the Attach Curves options with Keep Originals turned on, you're going to keep both of your two curves. It will then duplicate them and attach the duplicates together. So you'll still have the two separate curves and then a new curve will be created that will be both of these curves attached together. So I have both curves selected and I hit attach. So what we get, you can see, is we still have our two original curves, this one and this one. And the pink curve here, when I have the, either of these two selected, is the new curve. This is the new curve that was created. And you can kind of see there how the blend happened between these two curves. That's essentially the gist of it, but we can, of course, go into the options and settings and look and see what else we can do with this. So I'm going to delete this attached curve, and let's go into the options again. So the Curves menu, Attach, Options. So let's see what we have here. First is the Attachment method, or Attach method, and we have a Connect or Blend setting. So Blend is the option that's on by default. That's a kind of blended the two curves together. That's why you saw the curve kind of diverge from the original curves, just to kind of blend that continuity between those two curves together. Let's choose Connect, and you'll see when I do choose Connect, these options kind of change a bit. With Connect turned on, the multiple knots setting becomes available. With Blend turned on, we have the Blend Bias available as well as this insert not checkbox. Back to connect, you can see those two options are grayed out. Back to blend, we have these two options. So let's just turn connect on. We'll keep the multiple knots at the default setting of keep. Select both our curves and hit apply. So here you can see what happened. It said to connect the two curves together as opposed to blend. And you can still see let me just select both these. These are my original two curves. So this curve, this side of the curve over here, pretty much stayed exactly the same. And then this curve stayed mostly the same until it diverged slightly right here to form the connect point. So with the connect option, you're getting the least amount of changes made to your original curves. The blend setting will change the two curves to blend them together to get a smoother result. You can see here this is not as smooth as the original uh, blend setting. So I'm going to delete that curve. And again, we can look and see what some of the other options do. Let's go back to blend for a minute, since we used that to begin with, and look at blend bias. So blend bias, by default, has a value of 0 0.5. There's also this insert not option. Let me hit apply. And so this is the curve we got earlier. So I'm going to select this curve. And look over here in the attach curve inputs in the channel box. And you can see here we have a lot of these same settings from the original command options that we can change. For example, blend bias with a value of 0.5. I'm going to select the blend bias name, hold down control and middle mouse click and drag in my scene. And you can kind of go back and forth and see how that blend bias adjusts the shape. So as I take the blend bias down to zero, and back up to one, you can kind of see how it slightly tunes that blend between the two curves. 
blend bias of zero versus one. It's very subtle. It's not a big difference in this case. Let's take that back to 0.5 for now. Then the other option here that is available with a blend attachment method is the insert not checkbox. You'll see here there is a blend not insertion setting here, which is the same thing. And right now it's turned off, which is the same as it being unchecked. So let's type in one, which is on, and hit enter. And you see with that blend not insertion turned on, we get this point added in the middle. You see how that shifted slightly. If I turn this back to zero and you keep your eye right here as I do that, hit enter. You see how it just blends through here more smoothly. Let me right click and choose control vertex. You can kind of see the points that are available. And actually let's go to, let's select the curve, control A to get to the attribute editor. Look at component display and we can say display CV. So we can display the CVs of the curve here in the attribute editor. So hit control A again to get back to the channel box and look back at here. So we're going to do blend. So back to blend, not insertion. If I turn this on, you can keep an eye on these CVs and see how they change. You can see how we added more points to this curve to get this kind of result. And again, we're blend not turned off. We get less points on, off, on, off. So that's the blend not insertion. So let's turn it on and then go back to our blend bias and we can make adjustments here. And you see what's actually happening with that blend bias is it's determining which curve to favor when it comes to this center point that was created. Are we gonna favor that curve or that curve? And if it's a blend bias of 0.5, it's kind of in the middle. So that's what that blend bias is actually doing. If we take the insert knot back to off and again, do the blend bias. It's still doing the same thing. It's just with that insert not uh, turned off, we don't have quite the dramatic change in shape as we did with it on, like so. So with, with it on and blend bias of one, we get more of a sharp corner here, not too sharp, but sharper than it was. And we can kind of tune this and adjust it to get this curvature a bit more smooth through here. So that's the insert not checkbox, also known as blend not insertion, and the blend bias for this uh, blend attach method. And here you can see if we change that blend method right here, we can change it from blend to connect. So if I do that, click on connect over here in the options here, and just keep in mind that this options window here, anything I do over here will not actually change my current attached curve. This is only for future attached curves. So I'm just using this as a basis for which commands are available. Cause you'll notice that even if I change this to connect, the blend bias and blend not insertion options over here are not grayed out or anything. They still look very much available. So you can't really tell that they're not actually going to be active or have any kind of change on what's happening. See if I adjust this blend bias right now, I can adjust it between zero and one just like before, but it's not actually changing anything because we're not using a blend anymore, we're using connect. And so by clicking on connect over here, I can kind of see which options get grayed out better than I could otherwise. So with the attachment method changed from blend to connect, now these multiple knots settings become available with the default being keep and then the other option being to remove. So over here we have keep multiple knots on or off. And so if with it's on, that's like saying keep over here, but if it's off, it's essentially saying remove. So with that right now, with it turned on, we're keeping multiple knots, we get this result with the shape. Let's go ahead and turn it off and you can see the difference and it's very subtle. But you can see those displayed CVs kind of shift position. But what's essentially happening is if you keep multiple knots, if you have multiple knots turned on, let's go ahead and do that. What you are able to do is actually break the continuity at this point. If I select the control vertex here, you can see how I get a much sharper point right through here. You see that? It's very sharp. But if I go back to the curve again, 
and change this keep multiple knots to, to off, you can see here now, we again select this point, it's not sharp anymore, it's nice and smooth. So keep multiple knots lets you have a sharp point where the blend happened or where the connection happened. Remove allows you to have a smoother curvature through here. I'm gonna do all that stuff. And then let's go back to the curve here. And then the last thing we haven't really talked about so far is the insert parameter here. And I kind of forgot about it. I skipped over it by accident. But if you go back to blend, we get the blend bias and the insert not option. Let's go ahead and change this here. Method to blend, okay? We have our blend bias. Let's go ahead and take it back to 0.5, which is the default value. And blend not insertion is on, which means we we're clicking insert not when this is turned on. So with insert not turned on, then we have insert parameter, a slider for this, turned on as well. This becomes active. So with blend not insertion turned on here, this parameter value becomes active. So I can select it, control, middle mouse click and drag, and kind of see what happens. So it can go into negative values, but it doesn't really seem to really, that doesn't really do much. But I can go in, if I go past zero to more positive values, you can see as I increase this from zero to one, how it adjusts the shape of the curve. Again, if you go past zero, it kind of turns that option off. You have to kind of keep it between zero and one to really see that uh, result better. And it's kind of a, I would, I would describe it with a low parameter as kind of tightening in the CVs here to make this uh, join uh, faster or tighter or more sharp, if you will, to go up with it. It's kind of spreading these out to make the curve uh, smoother through here. So that's the perimeter, insert perimeter value and with how that affects the curves. After an attachment happens, you look over here in the inputs, we do have these two settings here, reverse one or reverse two. And right now they're both on. So what this is going on, what, what's happening here is asking whether you want to reverse the curve directions. Right now they're both turned on. If I turn one of them off, hit enter, you can see what happened here is that the first curve is reversed, the second curve, sorry, the first reverse one means the first curve is not reversed, well, the second one is, and you can see what happens is it, it tries to connect these two curves together, but this one's trying to connect to the other end of this curve. I like to, again, rem to remind you, the way you can tell it, what the start of a curve is, if I go to Control Vertex, and here I have my original curve over here selected, you can see this little CV on the, this left end is a little square, while this one is a dot. The square indicates the beginning of the curve, okay? And if I go back to my original curve over here and do the same, look at its CVs, there's a square on this side. So this, the beginning of the curve is on the left side for both of these, which makes sense since I duplicated the curve to create both. So they both have the same curve direction, starting from the same left side and flowing that way. Now this time, with the connection happening and I have reverse one, turned off, you can see I have the square here and it's flowing in this direction. And then to attach the curve, it then flows back around to try to connect to here. So this little square here is the start of the curve going this direction, flowing back around. So this curve on the right side is considered curve one. Let me turn reverse on again for this one. So now you can see it starts over here and flows this way because this side of the curve was reversed and it flows into the beginning of this curve because it has been reversed. They've reversed both of these curves to get this shape. If I turn reverse two off, you can see what happens here, is again that the end of this curve, again because it was reversed, is trying to go to the beginning of this curve and flow to the end of it. So we're getting this result. If I turn both of them off, we get this result. So Maya does kind of look at the curves and tries to reverse one or both to get the best result. If this is it, reverse one and reverse two are both turned off, that means that if it didn't do that, this is the result we would have gotten with this curve starting over here 
flowing over here to this curve and back. Let's actually delete this curve. So now I have my original two curves again, and both of them start on the left side and flow to the right. So I'm going to select this one first, shift select this one, curves, and then attach. So now you can see with selecting them in that order, reverse one and reverse two are both off. Okay, didn't need to do that. If I select this one first, shift select this one, curves, attach. Reverse one, reverse two are both on. So Maya kind of looks at the two curves, looks at their directions, and makes a judgment call on how those two curves should be reversed or not to connect them. So again, depending on which order you choose, Maya will decide to reverse the curves or not. But you can override Maya's decision here by reversing one or both right there in the uh, channel box. So method, multiple knots, blend bias, blend knot insertion, parameter. I think we've gone over everything. The only other thing I can think of to talk about when it comes to the attaching curves like this, if I select the attached curve, control A to open the attribute editor and look at the attach curve tab here. We have all those same options. We can reverse one, reverse two. We have our blend method here. We have all the same settings that we can change here in the attribute editor. We also have these input curves over here. Input curve one is curve shape one. Input curve two is curve shape two. Let's say we create another curve. I'll just draw this one over here. Again, I'll select this curve, attach curve. So input curve one, input curve two. Let's say what happens if we try to input a th this other curve. Okay, so I have these two curves connected, attached, like I did already. And here I've made a third curve. Let's say I want to change this attached curve. Again, in the aspect editor, you can see here, input curve one is curve shape one, input curve two is curve shape two. Let's say I want to add a curve three over here, add that into the mix. So instead of curve one blending into curve two, like I have here, I could have curve three blending into curve two, or curve one blending into curve three. Either way, there is a way to change that after the fact. So in order to do that, I'm going to select all my curves, go to Windows, General Editors, Hypergraph Connections. And when I do that, I get this. This gives me this list of nodes and how they're connected together. So here we can have these two nodes as curve shape one and curve shape two. They're both attached to or connected to the attached curve node, which is then going to the curve one attached node, which is the connected node here. So we have curve shape one, curve shape two. You can see them highlight on the side here. Goes to the attached curve node, which provides us with the curve attached node here. Then also over here, we have all the other things. We have curve one, curve two, curve three, and then the curve shape three and curve one attached. So these are all of our different option objects. This is the shape nodes we're dealing with. A uh, little bit of an off topic thing, but every object in Maya has a shape node as well as a object node or a translation node. So the shape nodes are what we're dealing with when it comes to providing the output curve here. So what we can simply do here is we can use this as a method of selecting all of our curves. So here's curve shape three. I can move this over here. And if we mouse over these arrows, you can see how these nodes are connected together. So if I mouse over curve shape one, one's connection to the attached curve node here, it says the curve shape one world space is attached to the attached curve nodes input curve one, okay? It doesn't really necessarily mean anything to us right now, but what we can do is go now open Windows, General Editors, and open the Connection Editor. So we can edit the connections between nodes. Hopefully you can see where I'm going here. So the Attach Curve node, I'm going to change what curve shapes are loaded into it. So I'm going to say Reload Right. So the Attach Curve node is now on the right side of my Connection Editor. So now I want my Curve Shape 3 to be Reload Left. So Curve Shape 3 is going to connect to one of these two input curves over here on the attach curve node. However, they're both being used. It can only have two input curves and they're both being taken up by curve shape one and curve shape two. So what I can do is determine which of these two curves I don't want to include in the resulting attachment 
And let's say I want to remove curve shape two, for example, which is the second one over here. I can simply drag a box around the arrow. This is selecting the connection between curve shape two and attach curve and delete it. Hit delete. And that removes, for one thing, it removes that connected curve now. That curve is no longer being rendered because it does not have two curves connected to the attach curve node. So now if I reload right now with the attach curve node selected, you see now I input curve two is available. It's not in italics and grayed out anymore. So what I need to find is world space on the curve I want to connect. So this is the curve shape three. Let's scroll down and there's lots of things in here. But let's try and find world space. And it's toward the bottom, I believe, if I remember right. Keep going down until we find, here it is, world space right there. So when I click on world space, over here on the right side now, you see the available connections that can be made with based on having selected world space, because not everything can connect to anything. When I select world space, Maya will tell me, okay, you want to use world space? You can connect that to one of these two things. So input curve two here is what I want to connect it to. You can see here in the graph editor now how a connection has now been made between curve shape three and the attached curve node, which is going to output to the new curve, which we can see here. So I can close now my connection editor and my graph uh, editor here, and you see that we're getting this result. So what we would need to do now then, select the new curve that we have, go back to the attached curve here, and we're going to need to determine which of these two we need to reverse. So I click on reverse curve two now, and you can see now we have a smooth flow between this new third curve and our original curve without having to go through the whole deal of attaching them again. Now, granted, what might have been easier to do is to simply delete the attached curve I had, select my two curves, and attach them. Okay, maybe that's a little bit easier, but I just wanted to show you, you could go in here and change how these things are all attached together uh, to get a different result. Anyway, I think that's about all I can think of when it comes to what you can do with attached curve and its options. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate all of your input and support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.